Hey, hey, welcome back to the Virgo channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, and I'm going to do a general message, obviously, for Virgo. Now, know that energy is fluid. Roles could be reversed. Always interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Never force anything. And also know you don't want to force anything, especially on this channel, because I like to go deep. So we do also look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and see why um, things are playing out karmically. You know, um, and this is really helpful, like when you are in a trauma bond relationship, when you're connected to a karmic mate, when your relationship looks like a roller coaster. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It just never seems to never seems to be able to find spiritual equilibrium, which is balance. It's again when there's you know, you're body, mind, and spirit is, is, you know, rooted in your body, right? A lot of times when we're in traumatic experiences, we're up in our mind. We're not thinking about what the potentials are. We're usually thinking about what we're afraid will happen. And then a lot of times we make what we're afraid happen, happen. And I don't know, I'm kind of feeling like, your person, you're connected to someone that's in separation from you that actually is like, it's not going to work because I fucked it up too, too much. And they're, but then sometimes they're like, maybe it can. And the reason why is because they really can't let go of it. So like I said, I feel like this person, like when it comes to real intimacy, real closeness real like that that it, this person gets overstimulated they get in all their own way they sabotage the connection and then what happens is once they're away from the relationship you know then they're able to like think clearer they almost do better when the relationship is over <laughs> and i know that sounds crazy like if you're in a relationship with this person they act like an asshole that's and it's because they're selfish. It's because they're always up in their mind. They're not actually in the relationship. So, and then why I say when it's over, there's no, well, I already screwed it up. So I'm not thinking about the relationship because I know you don't like me. So because of what I did. So I can again carry on, you know, like like a normal human being. I know that sounds crazy, but when there's severe trauma. And that severe trauma could be that child grew up, a person grew up in an environment where when they were a child, they were physically abused or sexually assaulted or somewhere where there was such extreme trauma, like fear. And so what you'll see is a lot of karmic patterns play out in relationships. And unfortunately, Virgo, I feel like you're connected to someone that looks very normal on the outside could be really attractive have all the right ingredients but they have a lot of spiritual blocks now we're gonna see why i just you know channeled that you know there's a spirit always likes to tell us where to start so first i'm gonna pull the underlining energy and i did that actually before the underlining energy that's crazy because normally i pull the underlining energy and then i channel Oh, spirit is mixing it up today. You know, that's what happens. That's, we're not in charge. Disappointment. So this is the underlying energy. And like I said, I feel like your person feels like they already fucked it up. So you probably don't see them doing anything because they know that they disrespected you. And, you know, and like you said, they're in grief and loss. You know, they know that you don't trust them anymore because of the lies and illusions of them like acting almost like you were negative when they were the ones that were negative. And it's because they are always coming from a place of fear. But like I said, they're stuck in regret. And so when a person's stuck in regret, they're actually not looking to do anything to fix it. They're in the Poor me, poor me, poor me. I can't really have this. I fucked it up. Um, no good. I'm not, it, it just doesn't happen for me. And I feel like 
it brings out all this person's inner child wounds where again that they just keep ruminating on that like that's that's the underlining energy the underlining energy really is disappointment and it's because they're just stuck in a place of fear and they're stuck in a place of fear um mainly because there are negatives they're negative it's the everything is based on what did happen what might happen but this person doesn't take the time to nurture the connection to take the time to get to know you it's like I feel like there is passion, but the problem with passion is this, that this person like always tries to make you jealous. And there's a sense that you make them jealous and you don't even know that you make them jealous. I feel like you make them jealous because of the way that you live, that you're a free spirit. You don't need to control everything. You're happy. You make the boat best of your situation. This person does not do that. You're likable. This person is not likable because again, they're negative and they can do come from a place of fear. And so they don't have relationships. What they have is attachments, okay? Which always will keep you in a place of disequilibrium, which is again, a lack of balance that because of when, when you're in an attachment relationship is what are you gonna do for me? What am I gonna do for you? What can I get from this relationship? It's not, I wanna be with this person. It's, it's I admire this person because I want this person to be an extension of myself. I wanna take what, I wanna pick the bones and I wanna pick the bones for everything that you're good. Like almost like suck the life out of you. That's what I feel like. And it's because I don't feel like I have any of those things that you have. Though I'm attracted to you and I like you, but you trigger me. And so again, there's a fine line between love and hate. And the reason why you're like, okay, I feel like this person doesn't like me. Well, guess what? Sometimes they don't. And it's because they're full of resentment. It has nothing to do with you. This is almost like playing out a karmic theme, like within your life, like you're like, okay, I don't need to do anything. People just get pissed off at me for breathing. They don't like the fact that I'm breathing. It's like, I don't have to do anything. There's a sense of, again, um, where I feel like, I, I feel like you grew up in an environment where you didn't feel safe to be you like your unfoldment process and you were raised by someone that was very jealous and like, and, or if it wasn't a parent, it was a sibling or it was someone that was extremely close. Okay. This trauma has played out as that, like, again, as intimacy problems, not in the bedroom as in trust where this person has learned to departmentalize through, you know, passion through you know i'm attracted to you that there's chemistry and there is but it's not built on anything and i think what happens too is this person like like they build up so much hostility inside of themselves and the person that they're usually attached to with the the uh, with that type of behavior that it it kind of mirrors a passion so almost like this person thinks that love has to hurt and that they're always protecting and looking for it and then projecting it and I feel like you just got intolerant you're like I can't deal with this I can't deal with your you know, the, your lack of caring, that you doubt that love is even real. And then when I try and tell you something or express the way that I feel or tell you I need something or whatever it is, I need you to show the fuck up for me, you get self-righteous. Like, 
um, criticizing you instead of just asking you, which gives me tremendous amount of anxiety. But understand this because this person also has anxiety. They they have anxiety because there's a sense that they know that there's something wrong. People know this person was so stubborn. And now what happened is I feel like you just let go. And now there's a sense of them just not feeling comfortable almost because I feel like you're the one that let go. You're the one. And if you didn't let go, you didn't put up a fight for this person. You were like, okay, whatever. Like this is, you go do you boo. Like, like that, that's, the, that's the energy. So we need to look at the hidden truths because we, what we see here is a lot of shadows. What we see here is a lot of, you know, um, problems because this person was betray betrayed by someone close in childhood. Like when I say this, I'm talking like sexual abuse. I'm talking about physical abuse. I'm talking about severe psychological abuse where that person like got themselves into a survival mode, which is that they come from a place of survival. They've conditioned themselves to come from a place of survival. So they're not even coming from their true self. Now I know you could say they look normal. Well, what happens with trauma is people compartmentalize. They don't, they, they still have to go to work. They still have to live. So it's again, people learn how to navigate, but those, those parts of themselves become suppressed. Those parts of themselves, they rejected. So they, again, created a facade to deal with that. But remember, these wounds happened in childhood. When you're dealing with someone 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, understand that's how many years they've conditioned themselves. They think that that is who they are. But that doesn't mean that they don't have feelings. And that doesn't mean that they don't have a God part of self. And the God part of self is a real part of self that's intuitive. That when we've gone through trauma, we be actually become very highly sensitive. So this person is very intuitive and they feel very connected to you. I wonder if you ha are happy without me. So it's again, they're thinking about it, ruminating, prideful. You know, like, a, but I feel like also annoyed, mad, because there's a sense that if you did it, then you showed this person a different version of themselves. So whenever you take down that person's wall with that facade, you know, you rip off the mask. Well, you're not going to be applauded for that. You're going to get a lot of projection. You're going to get a lot of... um anger you're going to get a lot of different emotions because the psyche identifies with that part of themselves as really that is who they are but that's not who they are that's what the problem is when a person has not done the healing work they keep getting layers upon layers upon layers because they keep attracting the same type of people and they're intuitive so they know how to stake it out they know kind of what you want or that they could think that they can read the type of person that you are. I feel like a lot of you are, are healers. Maybe you don't practice doing healing, but you've studied it, you read it, so they, they're, your intuitive was sharp. When you're like, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. I hide behind material things. Like I said, this person wouldn't have a mask. And so how do we hit, wear a mask? Well, it's a car we drive, the house we live in, the, you know, the clothes that we wear, everything. Everything is an illusion. But that the thing is, if everything's an illusion, what are you creating yourself? This person never does. Because really, it's not about being perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. We shoot for excellence. And so this person was raised by somebody that was not nice to them, that made them feel inadequate. And they have a tremendous amount of shame, tremendous amount of shame.
I couldn't let you get close to me. Again, that's like what I said. It's like if I have a facade, right, I'm not going to let you into my life. I'm not, I'm never going to really let you see me. Because first of all, I'm, it's going to be really difficult for me to remember the lies that I tell. You know, that's number one. Number two, if I have a lot of shadows, then I probably have addictions too that you don't know about. Because I'm still a human being that has emotions, regardless, because God made me in its image. And I don't express. I don't know how to express. I'm afraid to express. I'm afraid to look at it. I'm afraid because it's too too many people it's too many situations it's too many it's layers upon layers upon layers because the trauma happened in childhood so it's like i can't look at it because that per that person's psyche actually is like will die and now you you won't die but that version of yourself will die just like when adam and eve were eating in the you know in the garden when satan said oh you know the snake came by and said, you'll surely die. It's like, that. that's what they said. Adam and Eve said that God said that to the serpent. And the serpent was like, you're not going to surely die. You'll be like him. You'll be like God. You'll know everything. So that God was trying to protect us. So it's like, again, there's always twists. Again, like sneaky just like the serpent, right? Again, like playing with, you're not going to die. Well, we did die. That that version, that innocence of who we were died then. And it's because we had to know about death. We had to know about pain. We had to know about suffering. We had to know about everything that the tree of life shared. So it didn't just share good, it shared evil. So now we had to learn about evil. Well, your person does the same exact thing again it should, like the way that they phrase things the way that they you know go about it so it's that everything's a facade everything's a lie and they can't remember all those lies and they can't walk that truth and there's a sense that they know that you're a truth speaker they know that you'll call them out on it do you know it's again and that will ruin their facade, and they don't know like who they will be then. Who will I be? I won't be anybody. And if I'm nobody, then I'm, I'm dead. This is how the site works. This is why we can never get rid of negative energy. We actually have to actually do the work and integrate it. And this person's like, I don't even know where to begin. So this is why I'm like, yeah, we're not really going to see positive cards. Um, we're going to see a lot of reasons why, and like logic, analytical, if you notice. So I pull out a different deck, which hopefully will tell us a little bit more from an emotional standpoint. But I, again, when a person comes from survival, they are no longer intuitive. They're cut off from that higher self. And that's the God part of self, which is filtered. Everything is filtered through unconditional love. Again, everything is strategy. Surrender brings us together faster than resistance. <laughs> so, like this person knows, this person knows. I'm like, okay, give me some sort of emotional. And it's like, well, I know I have to surrender. Like, there's parts of me, and that would make it a lot easier. So, this person knows. But again, it's analytical. Like, I'm like, <clears throat> though the people are at least hugging. And showing some sort of emotional connection. And the irony is I feel like you have an emotional connection with this person. Meaning you're like, well, it's like we have this connection, but they're an asshole. You know, that's the thing. That connection isn't doesn't bring me that nice, loving, warm, hey, let's have fun, like the passion. No, it doesn't bring me that type of passion. It brings me like some, you know, uh, TV lifetime special, you know, <laughs> like attraction, which was not good because someone usually wound up either dead or 
like brutally like like their life was ruined because of this person so like you said we don't want the lifetime version we want we want the the higher the one that's filtered through unconditional love i'm looking for a way out of this situation so i can be free so it's almost like this person um so if you're with this person, like, then they're like, which I, I'm not feeling, because again, it says that you're set separate from them. So I feel like, feelings for some, this person doesn't have full control over their life. They could be like living in a situation with a bunch of people because they can't afford, you know, to live is is more or less what I'm feeling. I'm not feeling like this person is connected to anybody. I feel like at one point they were, but that person's long gone because they were like, you know, this person did to them everything that they did to you, but then worse because your that person hung around, you know, tried to fix them, tried to change them, tried to love them into change by doing and by giving and they you know got sucked dry and they were like you know I can't anymore and they you know left but when they left they finally left for good and so um but each time that happens to your person there's a sense of them being paralyzed and then not really living the rest of their life well or from that relationships not working out like I said, I feel like this the person's life like actually crumbles because everything was built on the person that you know they connected to. They didn't really contribute to the relationship. They go from one place to another place to another place. The relationship doesn't work out. And sure, in between, they stay with a friend. They stay with a few friends, which is what I feel that they're doing now because they're you know climbing their way out which is again no one would want that they know that they need to get strong what we are experiencing is a part of a large collective clearing don't feel alone because others are healing too so this person is like in healing mode and like so i feel like that's more or less like this person doesn't even know what's really happening to them it's like that every time they go through a bad experience um there's spiritual lessons and when i'm saying that this person doesn't even know what's happening it's like they're not awake enough so each time like there's major sabotage major like betrayal relationship ends it ends in fireworks ends in ruins and meaning this person's life gets ruined and they have to dig themselves back up and they always seem to be in a place of survival mode. But they're a loner because of it. They don't really have relationships because of it. Because the relationships are never built on, on good. So it's almost like there's a lot of people on the planet that live this way. And it's because they're detached. They're disassociated. That's what happens. We create shadows when we go through extreme trauma and we never heal that we never integrate it it's then what happens is we have to still function as i said earlier so we compartmentalize however all that trauma is still there so and so this person has feelings but they act like an asshole they act stubborn they want to control everything you trigger them by your light your light triggers them because they don't have it and that's really what it is. It's like they need to, they're attracted to you because you have it, but they're jealous of you because you have it. And so we see, again, trauma. Like there's a collective clearing because we've come to a place within our evolution that we have to, that we have to clear it. Otherwise, the relationships are not going to be anymore because psychologically, this is like, what would play out it would require um a lot of people to have to dummy down to step out of their truth right and, and people are not going to settle like if you're healed you're not going to be with someone like this because you know that being with someone like this will ruin your life 
that you can't change them. They have to change themselves. So there's a sense of uh, this person, like I said, is, in, is thankfully in a place of clearing. As you surrender your 3D expectations, I surrender to our 5D connection. Like I said, this person is like so primal. And so again, root chakra, which is, yes, I feel the spiritual connection. I feel the emotional connection, but I don't really know what to do with those feelings, know what to do with those emotions. Because I have all these emotions here that I haven't dealt with. And being that I haven't dealt with them, it's like, it's like, I know that I need to do healing, but also I know that I've kind of showed you an aspect of myself that really doesn't exist. And so, and I don't like the real version of, of myself. So I would actually have to let you in and you have expectations of me and that is again, a self-sabotaging behavior, by the way, because no one wants to be sold the Cadillac and then get to the place and see that it's a Pinto with three tires on it. You know what I mean? With bad paint job, you know? No, it's like, it's like, wait a minute, I thought I was getting a Porsche, you know, or whatever car you like. And then you get there and it's like a Jalapo, you know, <laughs> you're like, what the hell? You know, like you didn't think, or like when a person is all apt up in their feet in their, you know, Instagram, and then people meet and they don't look anything like the picture that was like that. And they're trying to play it off like, <laughs> like, like, oh, it was just good photographer. No, it, it wasn't. That wasn't you. And it's because it's, again, I've got, I'm insecure. I want to show I want people to perceive I'm um, this because I don't feel like this. I feel like this. And so is it conscious? I think everybody has a little bit to consciously. I'm not going to lie. However, this person's everything is a, is a, like a lie. Everything. So again, that's what they're truly afraid of. It's like, I know that you have expectations of me. It's like, and I can't fulfill them. And I also don't understand this spiritual connection that we have. It's like, you want me to surrender to it. Well, first, I'll surrender to that when you surrender to the expectations of me. And so there's a part of you that's like, you know, um, you don't mind this person having their, their process. This person just is, their, their process is avoidance, you know, so nothing ever gets healed, you know, that's what the issue is. And so, um, I can't fully be there for you. I know it's hard for you, but I have to go through this experience in order to heal it. So there's, again, there's a place like almost like your person is, um, for some is connected to someone else but it's there's no love there's nothing there it's a, like again I feel like like roommates you know and almost like you know I have to be here and I don't know why the person has to be there and for some it's the person's job for some it's again like I said I feel like they're living with a bunch of people that they can't really um you know, they can't be in a relationship. They can't because I feel like they're working multiple jobs. They're working crazy hours. They're doing everything possible to save money so they wouldn't be able to take you out to dinner. They'd be eating like out of a can. You know what I mean? You would see this person at the lowest point of their life. And I feel like this person, like when you met them, hid behind material things didn't let you get close to them mainly because they were creating a facade when meanwhile they didn't need to do that they actually manifested the life that they have because they put too much time and effort into the facade and not into the past relationship that actually destroyed them and it's that this is what happens when we get connected to a trauma bond i feel like your person you know like is 
isn't a hundred percent bad, but lives by their addictions, but then would feel bad and allow the person that they were connected to, to manipulate them, to make them feel bad. And I feel like they let other people manipulate them and feel to feel bad. So they overgive. And then what happens is they don't give to themselves and which is all another part of self-sabotage behavior and how they get in their own way, which is what always brings them back to like living in a home with four other people, like eating out of a can, you know what I mean? Like where they feel like they feel like a loser. They feel like a rolling stone. They feel like they don't have an anchor and they really don't because the betrayal that happened in childhood was again, happened with their, one of their parents, not feeling like again, for the majority it's the, was the father. So again, connection to father. So we knew there was a bad connection to father. Then we feel like we're not supported. We feel we we have shame because we feel like we're not good enough. And so if we're, conditioned from that place then every time we get around someone that we love or want or have some sort of feeling towards we will always get in our own way and sabotage the connection and that's what happened with the person it's like they just created a lot of shadows to hide that but they know they know um that it's easier to stay bound to people that you don't really care about so that this person can actually feel free and have a life. Otherwise, if they get into a relationship, a lot of times, this is what the relationship winds up being like where they've compromised. And then after they've compromised, they get destroyed. And this is how they view relationships. And that's why, like I said, they need to heal it and they know it. And they know also that the chances of you really taking this person back, like while they're like this, they, they kind of know, have like an intuitive knowing. And I feel like they really do care about you. They will like then be like, well, if I can come back at a different date, you know, I'd have a better chance than what it is now. When meanwhile, this person probably will never come back. Because if they actually do the healing, they would want to, you know, meet someone that never viewed them like that because they've done damage to the relationship. They've created problems already, even if you forgive this person. But I don't recommend it. So we have to ask ourselves, why did you attract this person? Like, again, you're a mirror of who and what comes into your life. And we know that it's not because you do the, these kind of things. So let's see, um, trauma, where you didn't get the love, the support that you needed, you didn't feel supported. So again, this person kind of played it out. I also feel like they're emotionally detached and you were raised by someone that was emotionally detached that acted a lot similar, not like, like, um, not like where I'd say that your parent was an asshole, but it was more like emotionally, they couldn't connect. They couldn't show up for you. They didn't, they didn't make you feel supported. They didn't make you feel loved. And it, it was because of how they felt about themselves. And so you got up close and personal to somebody that you actually had strong feelings for and saw the same wounds that I feel like you inherited part of that trauma because again, if your parent can't show up for you and you're perceiving that you're not loved or that you're not good enough, when really it has nothing to do with you, it has to do with the parent. Well, again, this person brought all those feelings out so that you had to look at them. Trauma, because trauma will keep us stuck in, in, in that time where we were traumatized until we actually heal it. And that's why I don't really feel like your person's emotionally intelligent either because the trauma happened and they never looked at it. You have to do self-realization. You have to, you know, become self-aware in order to heal. Self-love, to teach yourself self-love because it's again, when we grow up in a place of trauma, we don't like who we are. 
because we perceive that there's something wrong with us because the people that we perceive should be there for us aren't. So again, we wind up taking it on. So we wind up like hurting ourselves and that could be like, well, we smoke early, we get into bad relationships, we're promiscuous, we don't put enough time and energy into our own goals, our own hobbies, we don't create ourselves, we don't have dreams and aspirations where you're saying during this time with this person, this is what you need to do to heal that trauma. To be able to see a different version of yourself to attract a different type of energy to you. Because you didn't feel safe and secure. And that's again, so you had the same trauma as this person. It's just, I feel like you've done healing. This person never has done any healing. And so that's, again, you got to see firsthand what it looks like. And it, it helps you release whatever energy is like, again, that you might be holding on to like negative energies about your you know, parent, maybe again, like you love them, but you still couldn't get over why, but being able to see things from a different perception allows you to do so. All right, I'm going to leave that there because I don't know if you all can hear, but my dog's going crazy. All right, I will talk to you soon. And don't forget, if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, you have to write the word in your comment bar. And I think remember that it was disappointment. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon.